Well, what I, I presented about today at the, at the corn and soybean tobacco field day uh, was a little bit about what we're seeing early this season, which we've probably seen more transplant shock on tobacco than, uh, than we normally see. We've had uh, conditions back in May uh, where the bulk of our, our crop is, is transplanted that you know, temperatures were much like July and very dry. So a lot of the tobacco was transplanted in those kind of in, in those kind of conditions and had some transplant loss, uh, I, I, what I call girdle plant syndrome, where a plant that may be just a little bit leggy or wasn't uh, transplanted quite deep enough in the field, uh, when the plant wilts in transplant shock, uh, the stem may wilt also. And so it may be, it may fall just flat right on the ground and sun scald on that stem on that small plant. And with that, you'll get a girdled, stem effect right at the soil line there. And so we see some transplant loss. Some, uh, some plants survive, but we see some that don't. And so with tobacco, we, uh, you know, not so much, you know, total replanting where you go in there and you work the ground again uh, and, then, uh, and then transplant the entire crop. We're going in by hand and certain sections of the field where plants just didn't do as well. But some of the reason behind that it can be poor plants. And then uh, it can also be sometimes we're wondering about all the things that go in the transplant water. Uh, a lot of pesticides we use in transplant water, but we also use some things that we might not need to use, some extra things, extra starter fertilizers, extra root stimulators, extra soil conditioners, surfactants, these kinds of things. And so um, I've, had, uh, I've had growers on occasion they might be using seven or eight different products in the transplant water. And then on top of that, using low transplant water volume, which to me, low volume would be 100 gallons per acre or less. And then we've got some growers using 300 gallons per acre. But you know, low volume be 100 gallons per less. And then with six or seven or eight different things in the transplant water, and then it gets dry after transplanting, everything the plant's taken up is what was in that transplant water. So there could be some you know, some interactions between some of the different products. And, the, you know, the biggest thing I can tell people on plants is, is get a plant that's, that's fairly short, you know, not as much, you know, the, uh, the smaller length of the stem, the better. And then, and then transplant that plant as deep as we can without covering the bud up is really the idea. So the more stem that's, uh, that's underground, the better. There's some things that we've looked at on some of these additive type products in transplant water too. Some things that we have tested and don't think they're doing a whole lot as far as helping us on growth and yield. And they also in, on occasion could be hurting us with some interactions that they might uh, be having with some other products. We talked about the possibility for chemically topping burley tobacco uh, where we can eliminate manual topping and save that three to six hours per acre it may take you to to manually top burley tobacco. Uh, you might know if you're familiar with tobacco that FDA has now got authority over, over tobacco products. And there's been new, uh, 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 three new proposals in the past uh, 18 months from FDA uh, about limiting the amount of, of a carcinogen called NNN in smokeless tobacco products. There's been another proposal about, um, about limiting nicotine in cigarettes to non-addictive levels. And a third proposal recently uh, uh, about eliminating any flavoring in all tobacco products, not just cigarettes, uh, but all tobacco smokeless products and, and combustibles. And so, uh, you know, those things could all have impacts on Kentucky tobacco. Uh, we do know, I mean, we're trying to make safer products for sure, uh, but right now on the, uh, the NNN proposal, we just can't consistently meet that standard right now uh, based on our current technology. We may uh, get to a point in a few years where we can, but right now we just can't meet that standard consistently every year uh, of one part per million in an in, in, in smokeless tobacco products. And so uh, the nicotine, uh, obviously if we reduce nicotine to, uh, to non-addictive levels, uh, obviously um, that would take away a lot from, from the need for um, uh, cigarette production, cigarette sales would go down. Uh, that would affect burly tobacco production uh, as well. Uh, and then on the flavoring part, that, that, would affect, that would affect burly and dark tobacco production. So we're concerned about these proposals uh, that, are, 
and forth. Uh, if you sell tobacco right now, your companies probably are contacting you uh, to uh, provide comments to your congressman and representatives uh, on these different uh, these different proposals. But there none of them are are law right now, but they are proposing these uh, as at some point, you know, uh, looking at those as new as new laws. So we are concerned about that and how it would affect the economies of towns in uh, Kentucky that are dependent on on tobacco production.